nostro prossimo speaker. Si chiama David Gell, è un regista americano che nel 2011 eh, è uscito con un documentario eh, titolato Giro e l'arte del sushi, dato che era un appassionato del sushi. E dopodiché eh, è girato al nord della Svezia, la Patagonia, Los Angeles, New York, Australia e Modena per girare una serie di televisione eh, che si intitola Chef's Table, il tavolo dello chef. Grazie. All right, hello Modena. Ruth, that was really uh, beautiful. Um, thank you so much for your, for your words. And Jonathan Gold was such an inspiration. Um, uh, so I just want to first off just thank uh, Massimo and, and Lara for having me, um, having me back even after I wrecked their kitchen, uh, shooting chef's table there. So thank you again. Um, so you can set. Hmm? Activate the, got it, thank you. Um, so my name is David Gelb, I, I do a show, oh, good, okay. I do a show called Chef's Table um, on Netflix. Um, and uh, you know, I consider myself a very lucky person for having the opportunity to, uh, to make a show where I get to travel around and eat amazing food and meet very inspiring people. Um, and uh, you know, I credit it all uh, to my mom who uh, is a cook, um, she's a recipe chef, and uh, she instilled this love of food in me when I was really little. And uh, one of the greatest opportunities that I had was to get to go to uh, Japan with her. So you can see I'm lucky, I have a nice big chair, and uh, there's my mom. And uh, she took me to Japan at a young age, and the best part of going to Japan was coming home and being able to tell stories about it to, uh, to my friends in kindergarten and bringing back like special Power Ranger action figures and being able to share a really kind of uh, exotic place it was, it was really kind of special for me. And so um, when it came to uh, making uh, my first film, I really wanted to kind of bring that experience back again. But in this case, you know, I wanted to share um, my favorite food, which was sushi. And in making this film, you know, I really went out there thinking I was going to make something about the craft of sushi, but I came back doing something um, that was a little bit different. And so I'm just going to play the trailer just because I like trailers. I'm going to play a few videos today. ま、ニュージーシングと抜いてやっと並んだ。もう、そこら中に歩かない。好きにならなきゃダメです。それ自分の仕事に惚れなきゃダメなんですよ。Thank you. So, I went out and I thought I'd be making a film about how to make sushi and what real authentic sushi is, but instead we ended up with kind of a real, um, a personal story um, about a father and a son 
and about a uh, kind of a way of life um, and to uh, to learn to love your work. And so all the while, while we're making the film, myself and my small crew, even in the editorial, we're just thinking about ways, how do we apply Jiro's lessons to our own lives? And um, we try to apply that standard, his standard of quality, which is the highest to our own work. And uh, that's where we ended up. And uh, when it came to think about what the next project that I wanted to do was, I really loved the experience of making Jiro, and I thought, you know, is there a way that we can continue to tell these kinds of stories, but in different places with different characters? And, uh, you know, it sounds, it sounds easier than it was, um, because, you know, making that film about small sushi restaurant, he's doing the same thing every single day, you know, how does that turn into a feature film, and we found that it was about identifying the heart. And when it came to making Chef's Table, I kept on coming back to one scene in particular from Jiro Dreams of Sushi that I thought, this is, if we can achieve this, with it, this kind of emotional connection with a character in different places, then, then maybe we'll have something. So I'll play that scene. その卵焼きはずっと練習はしてたんですけど、俺練習ではまあ俺結構目になって実は思ってたんですよ。だけど実際やってみたら失敗の連続で、で一日最高四枚焼いたんですよ。で、4枚焼いて、4枚とも駄目だったりして、3ヶ月ぐらい、3ヶ月、半年ぐらいですかね、だいたい200枚ぐらい失敗。で、やっとできるようになった時に、これでいいってお屋さんが言ってくれたん
the dream was to have the greatest restaurant on the planet. I didn't know that it was going to end up like this. He's arrived at his own formula for what being a three Michelin star is about. There's a feeling of elation when you create something new. It's greater than any sensation in your life. To grow and to improve, you have to be there at the edge of uncertainty. My message is get out of your chair, of your sofa, and go out. Spread it on the plate. That is beautiful. When I'm plating a dish, there's a song that's going on in my head. I don't know how to get rid of it. What I didn't understand when I was looking at the beauty is just how torturous it is. If you're a very driven person, there's a point where you can hurt a lot of people. I thought, oh my God, what have I done? We were struggling. They didn't understand what I was doing. I was ready to close the restaurant, so I said, why don't we serve something very provocative? So, thank you. So, we tried to use all the different tools of cinema to, um, to tell our story in a very elegant way. And uh, the trailer, you know, it feels very serious with the Beethoven music and everything. But we were feeling quite good about ourselves that we were reaching an audience and that this show um, existed. And we're trying to figure out what we were going to do um, for future seasons. We thought pretty much the same thing. Um, with different characters, but then somebody sent me a video clip made by a college student that um, really made me think, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and play that now. When I was growing up, I was always just trying to make something that I would enjoy. I never thought I would be cooking at this level. Sometimes I feel like I'm drowning, and I wonder if this is worth it. You know, there's an old saying, no one saves us but ourselves. No one can, and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. And I think that's true. I was really moved by that. First off, because he, he nailed it. I mean, he shot it with an iPhone, uh, and uh, he figured out our exact font and like everything. And you know, so I have a team of like 50 people, and he's just one kid, and he did it all. Um, but it just it, it it really made us think about how um, you know we need to kind of we, we need to make sure you know, that we're not just getting caught up in our, in, in our own craft as filmmakers. You know, it's not about the fancy cameras and the slow motion effects and the cinematography. It really is about the storytelling. But it's also about making sure that we're not, um, that we're opening up our tents to lots of different types of chefs. That it's not just about fine dining. That there are chefs who are making a meal that you can get for 20 bucks for lunch that has 
an incredible amount of thought and passion uh, behind it. And so if you look at our first couple of seasons, it's very high end, it's very kind of expensive and oftentimes exclusive. Um, and so we're just trying to open up and find kind of new types of stories to tell. And, uh, you know, we've been, um, I would say that those parodies and there's a, a number of others are, are the greatest compliment that we could have ever received, but it also just kind of gives us uh, a chance to look at ourselves from an outside perspective. And so the following season um, was a bit different. And so I'll play a clip from that now um, and just to kind of show how we're trying to keep our identity of Chef's Table, but just trying to branch out. And this is a bit more reflective of where we see the future of the show going. I'm a go fuck yourself kind of guy. I make food that I want to eat, and I've never made any apologies. I didn't grow up wanting to be a chef. It was never a profession that I even considered. I want to cook for others. She with her gums. He was a street kid. Now he is the best chef in Germany by far. John Quan doesn't run a restaurant. She cooks for her monastery. This was as good as any meal you can get from any chef on the planet. When my wife died, I lost a partner. He went from darkness to light. At Central, every dish is one ecosystem. No one was really expecting that. It became a symbol of Peru. It's better to provoke and to overdo it than to be average. I don't think she sees it as a competition. She's here to express her inner being. So, you know, I found that in making the show, you know, we're making a show about people. Um, we have a responsibility to show all different types of chefs from all, to all walks of life, um, regardless of what kind of restaurant it is. And, um, you know, that's what we're going to be aiming for looking into the future to kind of create. We want to be able to set an example for young people to show that it's not a specific type of person who can become a chef. Um, you know, to quote my favorite movie, Ratatouille, anyone can cook. And uh, I think that that's incredibly valid. And so, you know, when I think about uh, the mission of the Basque Culinary Center and the mission of so many chefs here about educating um, young people about, you know, how to eat. And um, I think it's a really beautiful thing. And um, so, you know, I just want to thank you all so much for your time and for having me up here. So thank you so much.